You guys saw I made a video last week about white oak pastures. I was sent a diseased or infected testicle. I bought these from white oak pasture. So as you guys can see here, white oak pastures on the top of this package. These are lamb testicles. And the first one was fine. I chopped it up. The second one looked a little bit weird. It had like a growth on it. I actually thought it was two testicles attached together because the growth was so big. Me being the curious little moron that I am, I decided to cut it open with a knife and lo and behold, the grossest thing I have ever seen in my life, probably, uh, that I almost ate. So this is the testicle. Here at the bottom is this swollen growth. And uh, I, I cut it open and I squeezed it a bit and like this disgusting, uh, like yellow, orange, I don't even know, pale beige, greenish, putrid smelling liquid came out. I speculated it was cancer, but what do I know? I'm not a doctor or a veterinarian, nor do I think my viewers mistake me for one. A lot of you in the comments said to me it probably wasn't cancer. It was possibly a cyst. Some of you even suggested the sheep had that cyst because it was practicing no nut November. I'm not a private investigator either, and I don't have surveillance footage from my fleet of drones showing white oak pastures day in, day out treatment of their ruminants or any use of herbicides and pesticides for the fields or crops used for the animals. And of course, there may be cause for pus-filled testicles other than the diet and lifestyle of the animal. In short, receiving one pus-filled testicle from white oak pastures is not proof in itself that white oak pastures is one of the suppliers being deceptive in its marketing practices, claiming to offer the meat of animals raised in healthy ways while really using conventional agricultural practices to maximize their profits. Now, I do know that I paid money to get a pus-filled testicle. It smells disgusting. For, for a raw animal product, it's, it's like putrid. I, I, I can't... It, it, in appearance and smell and everything, it, it's, 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 it's absolutely horrid. Here is my invoice. I had confidence in white oak pastures and had been ordering from them for a few years, as I like to support what they claim to be doing on their farm. I don't know if the farmer wasn't paying attention to the animal's behavior, or if the butcher just missed this, or if they saw my name on the order form and thought it would be funny. Maybe it's naturally occurring? I have no idea. I don't know what they do. I am not sure what they feed their animals. I have no idea what's going on. I can't say whether the animals are happy and free roaming or confined to feedlot conditions. Not sure if they are spraying their fields with anything. I do know there are farms that do spray their fields with agrochemicals like atrazine and sell grass-fed beef and it hampers the reputation of producers that advocate for more natural farming practices and actually practice it. In some way, agriculture might have stepped away from these practices, but customers value having integrity in a product, not just slapping a grass-fed, pasture-raised, or free-range logo on it. The laws in America allow for deceptive marketing. As long as you don't feed the cow a physical kernel of corn, it's considered forage, which can be called grass-fed. That grass-fed cow might not be getting any grass at all. There are plenty of good apples out there, but there are some bad ones as well that are taking an unfortunate advantage of people wanting quality foods. I would even guess that most popular companies are taking advantage of this in some capacity. Instead of giving them what they want, in some cases, they just go halfway and then slap a grass-fed label on it. There is an unfortunate amount of misleading marketing. Some farms claim to be using heritage breeds, but then just feed the pigs corn and soy. They say their chickens are free range, but guess what? Those chickens get corn and soy as well. Grass-fed beef can get plenty of corn stalks, soy byproduct, unnatural foods, yet still be considered grass-fed. Kind of funny how America doesn't understand what grass is.